So I had a print in there from last night. And uh, let's take it out. Yeah. So this is the structural pieces of, of the codename Colossus. And um, you can see black and the white. The white is support material. This is soluble support material. I'll show you in a bit uh, the process of uh, removing those soluble su uh, support material. All the prints have to be on one of these uh, printing plates. They cost the bomb. The uh, materials cost the bomb. Um, but this is the most reliable, uh, dimensionally accurate uh, a, uh, a FDM print set I have ever encountered. So I'm going to put in a new print platform and try to fire it up for the next print. Prints come on the platform and they're stuck to this ABS platform. Uh, I've got to, well, it helps for me to remove them because it helps the uh, soluble uh, support material dissolve a little bit faster. So by, by flexing the board a bit, you can hear all that bones cracking. That's just a uh, the parts kind of coming off the platform. Ah, this one's come off. So, I mean, if you compare this to working with a desktop um, uh, 3D printer, you start to realize that, hey, this is a hell of a lot easier to remove. This particular print has been in the printer for, I think it was 16 hours. And it will have to be in the solution, you know, the wash to remove the uh, soluble material. That will, it's gonna have to be in there for another, maybe about eight to nine hours. So it's not a fast process. I mean, 3D printing is still not production speeds, even with a, um, production grade, you know, manufacturing grade 3D printer like the uh, Stratasys Fortress. I hope these sounds uh, we picked up fine on the mic. All right, so there, I've got these out now. So this is the washer that helps to dissolve the soluble material, the support. Um, it heats up the mixture in there to about 70 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. And usually about eight hours of running, you should get most of the, the support material um, dissolved. I've got, a, I've got a bucket down here that you, it's off camera that you, that you can't see. But this is um, the process of removing it. Right, the pieces uh, you saw in the previous plate that's got lots of uh, white support. It's not completely cleaned yet, but uh, well, this will have to do. I'll just have to remove those um, mechanically. Well, I've got a little bit of a, like a little cage thing that uh, helps. Oh, this is not, this is not doing very well. I might put it. I might leave this in the wash for a bit longer. Yeah, I'll leave this in the wash for a bit longer. So what I'm going to do, because these are not as dissolved as I would like them to be, might be because the solution is uh, getting a bit saturated. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I think I might just leave it in there for a bit longer. 
is I'll put the rest of the stuff which I just plucked off the plate into here so that they will get the wash as well. There's no small parts, so I don't have to, you know, all the small parts will go in the cage. The rest of it should be fine. So these go in. Check these again in a couple of uh, well tomorrow maybe or on Monday, and uh, see if maybe I'll need to change the solution. So the temperature rises well slowly; it'll go up right up to uh, 70 degrees Celsius. There's a little bit of a motor that keeps the water circulating. It's already kind of warm. And there's a bit of a timer. I might just increase that timer, really. Right, so I'll just put it on 12 hours instead of 9 hours. 9 hours doesn't seem to be enough. Just put it a little bit longer. Um, yeah, so I'll just cover that up. Kind of disappointing. But you see the idea of it, it's just a little bit of agitation. Uh, there's a special um, solvent that you add to the water to help remove the soluble support material. So this is the results of two days of printing. I know it's not a lot, there's just a, a handful of pieces here. And some people might ask, why am I using a really expensive uh, professional grade 3D printer when you could probably print this in two days with a MakerBot or something like that. Uh, the main thing is that although it did take two days, it wasn't two uh, days of my attention. I just left in the machine. I could go and do something else in which uh, I, I probably could not in a much smaller machine so where I have to every three hours or every two hours take out one of the pieces uh, or two of the pieces. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. I, I, I leave the prints on uh, throughout the day, throughout overnight, and it's fine because it's a reliable machine that, that can um, give the right uh, quality of work every single time. The second reason is that Dimensionally, this is very accurate. This is the, the curves of the angles. There's no warping. I can make really long pieces. I mean, I would, I would really challenge people to make some uh, of the bigger, longer, straight pieces like this uh, with a consumer grade 3D printer. And, and I think it was, most people would struggle with that. And that's another thing that gives me that peace of mind. I'll show you guys around the reactor a bit. Besides the Fortress 3D printer, they've got a uh, vinyl sticker cutter over here. So that's the uh, nice and big laser cutter they've got. So this is the welding area. In the corner there you see the coal metal transfer machine. This is a special welder that can weld different types of metals together, like steel to aluminium some of the prototypes that they are working on right now. So this is the more exciting bits of the reactor. Uh, they've got here a light commercial electric truck that uh, they are doing a little bit of research on. And this motorcycle is undergoing a little bit of a surgery to turn it into an electric powered motorcycle. This is a really interesting place, Reactor 79 of Wong Fong Research and Innovation Center. Uh, and I hope that you guys have uh, managed to see a little bit of the inside workings of how 3D printing works, at least for this particular machine and, and for what I'm doing with it. Um, I will keep you guys updated with more videos of the progress of making this new, new Colossus. So subscribe and stay in touch.